Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade game repair video for you today. We've got something super special here, obviously. This is Atari's Paperboy arcade game. And uh, this, is our, this doesn't belong to us. This is our buddy Adams down at the beach. If you don't know about him, he's got an arcade in the mall. And he's got all kinds of cool, super cool games down there. And every once in a while, he runs into one that uh, uh, needs a little work, and he sends it up here to us to look over it for him. So we're going to look over his Paperboy, his Atari Paperboy. Very cool game. You don't see it too often anymore. And this is the original dedicated cabinet. I think it's had some of the artwork replaced, or a lot of it replaced, but... Um, we're going to see what's going on with it and see if we can fix it. Now, from what he said, there's something wrong with the board or something, but we'll see what we can figure out. Um, it's got replacement side art on it that looks great. It's got a replacement control panel on it that looks great. Original handlebars. It's got a replacement marquee up there that looks great. And it's got this bezel around the monitor. The... Um, I believe that this has had a LCD monitor installed in it, and I think the uh, I think that's right, but we'll see. I haven't even opened it yet, haven't plugged it in, haven't done anything with it. And the reason that sometimes you put an LCD monitor in it is because this particular game has a 19-inch um, medium resolution CRT. In it there were only a few games that needed that monitor so if you uh, are restoring a paper boy or or a uh, like championship sprint is another one that uses that monitor it's really hard to find that monitor because there's only a few games that actually uh, that actually used it back in the day so almost all of the original arcade games from like the 80s and the 70s had CRT uh, CGA monitors so they were low resolution monitors so sometime around, I don't know, mid-80s, uh, they started uh, messing around with making higher resolution monitors. So the first one that they did was EGA monitors, which we now are referred to as medium resolution. Um, to, to my eyes, I can't tell that the resolution looks any better on a medium resolution than a standard resolution, but I'm sure there is some benefit to it. And so they made Paperboy and Championship Sprint at the time whenever... Uh, EGA uh, monitors were just kind of coming into their thing, into their, into prominence. Uh, like I said, there's only a few games that used them, but a lot of the driving games from the 90s ended up using medium resolution monitors, but they were 25 inch, which won't fit in this cabinet. So in, in this particular cabinet, you're supposed to have a 19 inch EGA medium resolution monitor, which is almost impossible to find. So, this particular one has a an adapter board that adapts the signal and then sends it to an LCD. I'm the type where I like everything original, 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 but this is a situation where to find one of those medium resolution monitors, you're probably gonna have to pay 600 bucks, something like that, to get one. Hell, I wouldn't pay that for it. So all that to tell you, I don't blame them for putting the LCD monitor in it. If you don't have the, if you can't, if you don't have that original uh, CRT, what are you gonna do? right so uh, let's open it up and look inside of it whenever I'm fixing one what I like to do is just look and see if anything's messed up if anything's hanging inside of it or missing or anything like that before I turn it on we could just plug it into the wall but it, you know the monitor may have slid out of place and I turn plug a power in and it fries something so I like looking at them just to see uh, what kind of shape everything's in before I plug them in so let's open the back door and check it out Okay, so somebody has pretty extensively reworked um, the game already. It's got the original CPU board in it. This was probably a dedicated, uh, it was either a dedicated championship sprint or a dedicated paperboy. I mean, they've got the dedicated paperboy boards in it, so. It's got them. It's got this power supply down at the bottom, and then it's also got this one in here. But I believe that's how the factory ones were, I think. I, I've had a lot of championship sprints, and I think I think they were like that. They had two power supplies. Uh, that's the back door sheet that's actually inside of it. And then uh, down here on the bottom, someone has replaced the two big blue um, 
um, capacitors. That's good. And then you can see where they've mounted the LCD like we were talking about in it. Just a computer monitor. Um, I wonder how they did the adapter. Oh, it's it must be up there. So there's probably an adapter board up in the front. That's fine. Um, yeah, everything looks clean. So uh, why don't we plug it up and see what we get. We'll see if uh, nothing's hanging. Doesn't, I don't see anything laying on the power supply down there or anything. Let's plug it up and see what we get and just see what, what happens. All right, so we plugged it in and it immediately comes up to just a bunch of garbled stuff. So it's, you know, not doing anything. So the very first thing that you want to check on any game is all of the power. So we're going to look in the schematics. We're going to figure out where power is supposed to go and if it's there. <laughs> so uh, let's look at the schematics. Okay, so of course all the schematics are pretty much online. And uh, let's see what we got here. Here's where the power comes in. It actually says power in. Ba -ba -ba. All that must be working, right? Everything's turning on. And then this is the power supply at the bottom of the cabinet. And it sends voltage over here to the fan, which is working. You probably heard that. It also sends voltage to the monitor. Um, it sends voltage over here to this uh, regulator board that was on the bottom of the door that we just looked at. Uh, it sends more voltages down here for the coin door, for the light bulbs on the coin door and stuff. Uh, and so that that board, that power, the power brick in the bottom, since they've already replaced the two uh, big capacitors, we really don't have to mess with it unless something's wrong. And then this regulator board over here creates a bunch of voltages, and then it sends volt. It sends all the um, it amplifies the audio too, so it goes out to the speakers. So it gets the audio in here from the game board, amplifies it, and sends it back out to the speakers. But we're not that far yet. So what I'm going to do is the power from the the power supply comes over here, and it powers up these two boards, which make the game run. And as you saw, the game is not running, so that's a problem. So we've got C video PCB schematic diagram. So this is the video board in the cabinet, one of those big long boards on the back of the of the uh, door, and it says uh, five volts regulated. So that should be pretty near five volts on these pins, and then five volts return, which is the ground. So that should be ground on those pins, and then you've got a sense, a positive sense, and a negative sense. So what the way that works is the positive sense should be near five volts if there's resistance in the line and this goes up you know if they if the power supply senses through this line that the voltage isn't five volts on the board it's like 4.8 the power supply sends a little more voltage across the line to make five volts get to the board so blah 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 so the positive sense should be around five the negative sense should be ground and then there's also like a 15 volt and then over here it says C CPU PCB schematic diagram so this is the CPU PCB and you can see over here is that other power supply in the cabinet I was talking about that only does the 5 volts. And so we've got three lines here that are the 5 volt return, which is the grounds. And then we've got three lines here, 6, 8, and 9, that are the 5 volt regulated. So it should be 5 volts coming off that power supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check all of these lines on both of these boards and make sure that, all, that the boards that aren't working, make sure that they're actually getting their, their voltage. So I've wrote them down. The reason I usually write them down on a piece of paper is so I can scribble on stuff and make marks and stuff. I don't have the printed out schematics for that. Um, you know, they're usually on a big, huge sheet. But if you if you uh, get those, you know, I don't really want to write on the, the actual original schematics. So I just write down if I'm looking, like right now I'm just looking at power. So I'm, I just write down which ones I want to check. And then I go check them and I can mark stuff off and write things down. And, nothing gets screwed up so uh, let's go look in the game and see what we got all right so I tested those voltages and the 10.3 volts that comes from the block in the bottom over to the power supply that gets turned into the five that goes to this board was missing uh, 
so with that voltage gone, somebody had attached these two wires to the jumper points. So the, basically the way this works is that power supply supplies voltage for the top board and this power supply supplies voltage for the bottom board, the video board. This board here also makes a bunch of other voltages and it also amplifies the sound. So the uh, since that 10.3 was missing though, this board wasn't making the 5 volts that this board needs. So they had run these wires from this power supply to run both boards which is fine like that but um, the problem somehow that that 10.3 uh, missing the board the board was actually booting up like that but with that 10.3 missing it was making the 15 volts missing on the board so without the 15 volts there's a section in the um, reset that doesn't work right so I'll show you that all right so I looked all through the schematics and the 15 volts and the negative 15 volts are mainly used to do video so they make the colors and stuff which isn't our problem right our problem is the damn board won't boot up but look what I found on the CPU board there is this weird little thing where it says power okay and that's the 10 volts off the power supply and then it says plus 15 volts and negative 15 volts go to this LM324 chip and then there's a five volt after that and blah, blah, blah. So it's used right there in this, in this segment, this section of the power supply. That is the reset and watchdog clear section. So in other words, the reset section is what happens when the game first comes on. The watchdog clear section is what happens if something hiccups on the board and doesn't do what it's supposed to, the board's supposed to reset. So that, that voltage is used uh, right here in this reset section and if you look close it says plus 15 here and negative 15 here going into this op amp and then there's a 5 volt here blah 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 so there I don't I didn't go to school for this so I'm not sure what they're doing there but there's if this is negative 15 and it is and this is only negative 8 then that's gonna screw this all up you know so I'm sure this isn't doing what it's supposed to do which means that the board's probably not resetting so that, that's why we're getting just a static screen and then the board never boots up. So what we need to do first, there may be other things screwed up, but what we need to do first is get this 15, this 15 that looks like 8 to look more like 15. Okay, so after testing the fuses, I found a bad fuse, right? It was too small. It was supposed to be a 20 amp, but they had put a 4 amp in, so it, it blew immediately because there was more amperage than that running through it. So I put in the new fuse which gets this, the 10.3 volts back over here where it needs to be, uh, which gets this all making the 5 volts like it should. I, I replaced the um, two bottle cap transistors just to make sure everything's cool. And so now we've got it right. We've got 5 volts going to this board and we don't need these two wires. So we can get rid of those now, right? So this board's now getting 5 volts. It's now getting its 15 volts. It's getting all of its voltages that it's supposed to. And so we can try turning it on. Voila! So we are up and running. Okay. Now, when you coin it up, the sound has this hiss in it. You may not like the news, but you have to admire the person who delivers it. Take boy. Hear that whistle? So I called Adam to confirm, and he confirmed to me. Sorry about that. <laughs> he confirmed to me that basically the problem was, other than it wouldn't boot up, before it booted up, whenever it booted up, the problem was that whistle and the sound. So something is really screwing up the sound. My theory is, it's this damn fan. I think it's that fan. So they've got a fan on the in the cabinet uh, because when the doors close, it'll blow on all these boards and keep everything clean, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. But 
that damn thing's making all kinds of noise, just the bearings and stuff. So I think that the fan is interfering with the sound. That's my theory, at least. So what I'm going to try to do is temporarily unhook the fan and see if that fixes the sound problem. Okay, so we're back up and running. I have unplugged the fan. Makes it much quieter. So let's see if the sound's any better. If not, we'll look for other stuff. Nope, still messed up. He said that the longer you leave it on to, the worse it gets. Sound, the speech is gone, isn't it? I need glasses. Okay, it came back that time. Okay, so how are we going to figure this out? It must be something on the actual CPU board that creates the sounds because the power supply he switched out with a different one that worked fine. So, we're gonna to have to look in the schematics and find a clever way to uh, isolate which part of the sound it is. Okay folks, so it's a little hard to see, but I'm in the test menu and it says 6502 processor test, number of sounds 79, current sounds, tw current sound 21. So you can move the sound with the handlebars and then hit the start button and it'll play that sound. So nothing for 20. 21 is just like a clicking. So these are all screwed up, but I don't know if it's Stopping at nothing in his valiant effort to save the plan from TV journalism. I think the speech is fine, actually. Unmatched in his grim determination to deliver the news, Paperboy does daily battle with the forces of darkness and evil. I, I don't think it gets any better than that. Paperboy, he doesn't write the news, he just delivers it. <laughs> okay, so I want to get to like the. Um... Sometimes I hate this job. All the speech, I think, is fine. Got it. I need glasses. I didn't mean it. Whoa, I think I gotta change my shorts. <laughs> hey, nice walk. You're fired. Trying to see if it's in both speakers too, you know. Let me see if I can find something that should play in both. All right, I'm gonna keep messing with it, see if I can figure out anything intelligent. All right, so I noticed when you do some of the tests, nothing's coming out of the left speaker. So I took the marquee off and then took the light fixture out. And I've got my multimeter here set on ohms. And if you unplug the speaker and if you check the, uh, well, it's hard to do it. It's a lot easier to do it when I don't have to film it. But anyway, if you check the resistance on just the speaker, you know, between the two terminals, I got nothing. So the speaker's bad. I can do this other one while it's plugged in, which, you know, if, if you do it while it's plugged in, it's not as accurate usually, but I'm getting like seven ohms. 
it's jumping around a little bit because it's got power running through it. But um, so those are eight ohm speakers, and the left one's bad, so we got to swap that out. Um, and then we'll go back and do the sound test again, just, just to try to figure out what it sounds like is distorted and what isn't. Okay, folks. So temporarily, I just laid a speaker up in there and hooked it up, uh, and I still didn't get anything out of that speaker, even though it's a good speaker. And that one t still tests bad, you know. Um, so I took the the uh, wiring from here and put it, which was working, and put it on this one, and it's still working. And whenever you go into the test, you get some interesting stuff. So you got to watch carefully because it goes quick. Here we go. <laughs> Now you have a friend in the paper okay. vision. So the left pokey test barely worked. The right pokey test didn't work at all. Uh, so the, uh, I'm thinking that's kind of where we need to be looking. So we're back to the schematics. So this is the output. So uh, you have a uh, audio one output here and an audio two output here that then goes to the power supply and is amplified and sent out to the speakers. Well, supposedly, the power supply works fine and I haven't found anything wrong with the power supply yet so supposedly it was just checked out so I'm going to assume which you know what that means I'm going to assume that those are good for now we might come back to it though I mean this is this is uh, this is on the board but the, the I'm going to assume that after it leaves here it's fine okay so you've got this little amp on the actual CPU board that combines Pokey Audio 1, Talking Audio 1, and Yamaha Audio 1. This one does Pokey Audio 2, Talking Audio 1, and Yamaha Audio 2. The talking seems right, doesn't it? The speech seems fine. It clears up whenever the speech starts, you know. The Yamaha is the sound, like the, uh, the uh, little songs and stuff. I'm thinking maybe that's fine too. I think the the problem might be with this pokey audio one and two, especially since it sounds bad in the pokey test. Right, so it said left pokey, right pokey. I don't know which one's which. Um, but you've got these two pokey chips here. They call them. It means pot and keyboard in, interface or something like that is what pokey means. It's a famous chip that Atari used on all kinds of stuff. So there's two of them in the schematics, and one of them comes over here and it makes Pokey Audio 1, and one of them comes over here and it makes Pokey Audio 2. Now they both run through this 10F LM324, and if you've ever seen all these videos I do on repairs, I hate those damn things. They go bad a lot, so those are suspect as hell. There's a 10F and a 10C, and both sides run through it. But what I'm going to do first, just because it's easy, is I'm going to just switch the two pokey chips. They're exactly the same. So I'm going to take 7B and 6B and just swap them. And then go back into, of course, with the power off. And then go back into test. And uh, before it was, we were getting the left pokey barely worked and the right pokey was dead. So I'm going to swap it and see if that changes that particular test any at all. All right, so these are the two pokies. They're the same chip number. So I went ahead and swapped them. And uh, we'll try it again. Left pokey's dead. Now you have a friend in the paper business. Right pokey worked perfect. So you know what that means? Whichever one's the left pokey must be screwed up, because it was the right pokey and it was screwed up then. We're not screwing around, people. I mean, let me just wander back here to my... Pokey and get a pokey chip. <laughs> okay, so I figured out by messing them all around that this pokey chip that was in there is not good. Wherever the, whichever side this one's on doesn't do a damn thing. But you cannot get the left channel to sound good no matter how. If you have if you have this pokey chip in the left channel, the left channel is just dead. If you have the the uh, a good pokey chip in the left channel, you just barely hear it. 
and it, it goes back and forth. Okay, folks, so I messed with the uh, CPU board and we're getting absolutely no sound because I disabled all of it, but I did it for a reason. I'll show you. So it's doing the Yamaha test. It's doing the left pokey, the right pokey, the speech. So we got nothing. Now the reason we have nothing is because I disabled all six of the inputs go into the audio and we're crystal clear now, right? So there's no, there's no sound messing up. Like there's no squealing sound, which I think since the, since the sound goes through these, then through the amps and out, I also replaced both of the amps, but it goes uh, out to the board is amplified and goes to the speakers. Everything past here must be good. So I'll show you in the uh, schematics what I'm doing. Okay, so we worked at this. Er, we looked at this earlier, and we're. Uh, I'm pretty sure this. This is the one that no no sound is coming out of. So I replaced this amplifier. But what I did was, see these three resistors. See it's Pokey one. Uh, it says T one audio. I think that's talking. It's it's the speech line talking, one, and Yamaha one, which is the synthesizer stuff. And then this other side is. Pokey 2, Talking 1 again, and then Yamaha 2. The reason that they're both Talking 1 is because there's only one speech line and it goes to both amps, right? So uh, I think this one isn't making any sound and this one was squealing. So I, I, dis, I took all six of those resistors loose so that none of the audio from the board is hooked up and it's not squealing at all now. So I don't think it's something that's just inherent in the amps after this so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slowly hook these back up the first one I'm gonna hook back up is the speech on both of them and see if we now get speech out of this side and if which we we didn't get anything out of this side before and see if we still get speech out of this side and if it has the squeal in it that'll help us narrow down where the squeals coming from okay so we're getting farther along so to recap we replaced we got both of the pokies tested by just swapping them I've hooked both of the pokies back up those two resistors and I also hooked up both of the speech resistors right for the left and the right side and this is what we've got so the, the Yamaha isn't hooked up which is like what's making all the sound effects and the uh, the music so here we go no Yamaha because it's not hooked up left pokey's not working now you have a friend in the paper business. So the right pokey's working fine and the speech is working fine with no distortion. But the left speaker isn't working at all. Okay, I messed around with it some more. The speech is going to the left side and the right side, which is the left speaker and the right speaker. I unplug the right speaker and when you play the speech... Disguised as a likable juvenile delinquent, Paperboy journeys through a world of incredible danger. So the left, the left amp is working. The left speaker's working, although that one's bad. The right speaker's working. Um, it's just the left pokey audio isn't working. Okay, so I had the two pokey chips confused. When I was swapping them around earlier, I had the bad one back in. So now I've got two good ones in. I've got both speakers plugged up. <laughs> so let's try it one more, one more again. Yamaha thing still isn't plugged up. Left pokey. Now you have a friend in the paper business. Now I've got a friend in the paper business. Isn't that great? So all of these are the Yamaha sounds that don't work. And then you, you get up to the stuff that the pokey does and it works. You may not like the news, but you have to admire the person who delivers it. Paper boy. Paper boy. Okay, so I hooked up the right side Yamaha audio. It's perfect. Right? So I'm going to hook up the left side, and we may be good. Now, remember, I replaced the two TDA 2002s. So one of those could have been our whining problem the whole time. 
Okay, so I plugged back in the final sound and. <laughs> So I think all of our sounds are fixed. It was the TDA 2002 amps on the board and one bad pokey. Well, I guess, unless some of those are probably supposed to be missing. Disguised as a likable juvenile delinquent, Paperboy journeys through a world of incredible danger. <laughs> Okay, so I'll solder all that stuff back in because right now they're just touching in and then we'll uh, start it up. We might have to adjust the monitor a little bit. Okay, we put the marquee all back together. We got both of the, I got the new speaker mounted in there the way it should be. Got the old speaker out here. Boy, that's a damn nice speaker. Wonder what happened to it. Oh, I see what happened to it. Let's, let's complete the sound thing, okay? If you look real close. See this little wire that comes off of here and goes over to the cone? It is broken loose of the cone. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, oh. Bam, see it? On the bottom there? The wire broke off the cone. That can be fixed. Or you can just put another one in there like we did. So here's what it sounds like with everything back together. Okay, so this is the video adjustment screen. Um, it's got the LCD monitor, of course. It has this little board inside of it there. I think they call that a Gonbees board or something like that. It's pretty common on arcade games to put one of those in there so you can install an LCD screen. Uh, but it's not quite right like it's it's a little bit too far this way uh, it's too wide so I'm gonna see if I can get the width a little better um, in the setup menu okay folks so this is how it ended up after we adjusted stuff got the paper nice and centered in the middle of the screen it's looking pretty good so I'll show you how these are how these adjust the damn things are touchy as hell. So you, you hit this little menu button and a bunch of stuff pops up on the screen, right? And so you've got different resolutions that you can display it in. I don't know if you can see it from there. All right, so we were, it was set on 800 by 600. I turned it up to 1024 by 768, All right? That made the picture look a little better. And then the geometry, was 50, 20, so the horizontal position was 50, I changed it to 70, uh, the vertical position I left alone, the horizontal size was 50, I put it on 36, um, the clamp and the clamp SP were still fine, uh, so I left that alone, all this stuff up here is like the brightness, uh, contrast, saturation, sharpness, I left all that alone, it looks pretty good to me, so by changing the, the resolution I wrote down what it was before so the picture of the brightness the saturation the contrast and sharpness I just left it how it was the uh, geometry the horizontal position was 50 I changed it to 70 the vertical position was 20 I left it alone horizontal size was 50 I changed it to 36 vertical size I left alone the clamp settings I left alone it was 800 by 600 I changed it to 1024 by 768 and it looks real good so you know what that means I think we're done. Um, I don't like that fan being kind of loud. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we should swap out the fan. What do you think? I'm gonna go look and see if I've got a fan. All right, it's the damn fan. So it was mounted in there like that on this little bracket with a couple screw holes. And this is the one that was in it, right? 
See the bearing there? Or I guess that's the bearing. I don't know. It was getting really noisy. You heard it, right? So I happen to carry fans. So I had a fan. Mine is thick though, but I was able to put it in the bracket and just put some washers on it. And whenever you swap a fan, look at this. This is pretty cool. Look, it even hooks up the same. So there's the original way that it hooks up. There's my new one. So it's just a little plug. I'm going to plug it right back in. And there was a screw right here for the ground. And I got one right there for the ground, right? So whenever you, whenever you swap one of these, there are little arrows on it that tell you which way it spins and which way the air goes. See how, see how the air the arrow is pointing towards me? So it was mounted like that. And this one spins the exact opposite way, but it, the arrow is going this way where it's coming towards me. So we're good to go. I'm going to answer the phone. Okay, so finally we put the fan in. It sounds a lot better. That's an AC fan. It runs off 120 volts. That's what he's got it tied into the AC. They're a little louder than the DC fans. If you put like a DC, like 12 volt fan, it wouldn't quite be that loud. But uh, with the back door shut and everything, it'll be great. So there we go. We got Paperboy up and running. Now, I would imagine you've probably already seen our video of us playing this thing. If you haven't, go find it. What we've been doing lately is we upload the video of us playing it first and then we upload the video of us fixing it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Boy, the, the damn LCD looks pretty good, people. I mean, I know it ain't the same, but it looks pretty good. And c Considering, like we were talking with the medium resolution monitor, I don't have a problem with it. So there we are. Leave your feedback below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this for you. We're going to button this thing up and film the video of us playing it that you've already seen because we're going to upload it first. <laughs> but leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the tr trouble to uh, film it for you. And we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.